The shadows of the labyrinth close around the party as they step out of the Lepi village. Shinzo, Ikarath, Helica, and Chantel have decided to venture deeper into the labyrinth, while Sorok stays behind with Amo to discuss trading agreements with the Lepi Queen. The four of you have been asked, slash commanded, by your captain to find the treasures in the labyrinth and figure out exactly what hides inside. And thus, we join you there, walking into the dark sector of this labyrinth, of this massive maze of ancient halls and stonework. Rising around you like an artificial canyon filled to the brim with blackness. Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, and others, to Prism Blade Gaming's production of Seas of Salt Marsh, episode 15. My name is Hawk Johansson, unfortunately, and joining us today, we have uh, Bean. Yo! Uh, Shun. Greetings. Uh, Ryan. Hey, hey, hey. And uh, Shinzo. Hello. Also joining us today is uh, Quinn, a.k.a. Sir Not Appearing in this film. <laughs> and as mentioned at the end of the previous episode, Dingo will not be able to join us anymore because of real-life work events. As soon as he gets a night off, we're going to give him a proper send-off. But, for the time being, let's raid a dungeon. Yeah. Alright, so Sorak's not supposed to be there. Alright, go! There's oh. literally no preamble to this. You are in a labyrinth. It, it, it is a dungeon. Do the dungeon crawl. <sighs> What Oops. is the uh, light level? I mean, I don't think it matters, but is, um, is it dark, dark? Those of you with dark vision can see. Those of you with low light vision can see, thanks to the light coming in from above. Uh, it's faint moonlight. Oh. So enough that you can see pretty well. Oh. That is the wrong button. What about a cramped place, he says, as he's moving through this corridor here. Chantel touches the walls as she walks. What does it feel like? Old stone. Mm. Oh. Okay. Mm. Everything Dang. here feels chilly. Frozen, almost. All that's around you is icy, cold stone. Helica feels right at home, considering, you know, undead. Hmm. It's another day at the office. <laughs> All right. If you say so. <laughs> oh, she looks at the ceiling of this place. Is there anything, like, of uh, note? There is no ceiling. It is open oh. to the elements, which is how the moonlight is slowly, like, oh. gently filtering down. Oh. Shinzo, oh, as cold. you look through this very narrow passageway, you can see on one side is a sigil that looks like it has a ruby embedded into it. He's going to try to rip the ruby out. You cannot. You can't reach it from where you are. Okay. Can he squeeze through the passage, though? Uh, he can certainly try. Go ahead and roll me uh, acrobatics. Let's say. Is he skinny enough to do it? You try. <laughs> but no luck. Your armor Extreme. and your the rest of your bulk are making it too difficult to properly get in. 
He'll turn back uh, to aircraft. Uh, you want to try to flip through? Uh, this feels like a bad idea. But it is pretty nice. I will try. Oh. Acrobatics yeah. as well? Yep. <laughs> yep, that feels right. Yeah. Oh. You uh you uh look through and as you're about to push yourself in, you see suddenly Helica appear on the other side and you uh slightly freak out a bit. <laughs> uh. <sighs> oh. Ah. Okay. I'm dead. Did we come <laughs> around in a circle? It appears so. Why are you trying to get through there? No. Mm. No, I wasn't. <laughs> oh. Uh. Let's see. I'm gonna try to get through. I'm, try I'm gonna try to snake through here. Alright, you'll uh, a little bit. <laughs> You'll need to be uh, making the same check. There you go. Helica, you manage to slip in. And yeah. as you gently touch the ruby, it suddenly, like, like stone panels snap shut over it as it sinks back. And you hear a distinct grinding sound from somewhere nearby. Oh. Ooh. Looks around. I think something And happened. then, a couple seconds later, you feel the walls around you suddenly vibrate as metal spikes suddenly skewer you. Mother bitch. Alright, uh, make me a deck save at disadvantage, please. Alright, <gasps> deck save at this. Here we go. You manage to position yourself just right so that the spikes only graze you, dealing a total of five damage. Nice. My goodness, you're nimble as a cat. I should have expected. <laughs> Quite. Um, so, what are, is this area still laden with the spikes? No. As soon as they came out, they sunk back into the walls. Mm. They're gone. Mm. Uh, what's I heard something coming towards that direction. Looks like the path is open. Right. Madama, get Chantel. And then she comes and grabs her hand, pulls you along. Thank you. Whoops. Mm. I need to reveal areas, not just not hide them from the party. <laughs> Hawk, you did a good job with this, uh, Matt, by the way. Yeah, All this right. is pretty intense. Yeah. Oh, zoom out. Y'all haven't seen the full thing. Let me... Oh my god. This is like 25%. This is like 5% uh -huh. of... Yeah, y'all ain't seen shit yet. Oh my lord. <laughs> oh loud. <laughs> We're all okay. gonna get stabbed. Oh, yeah. oh, there are countless traps in here, trust me. Oh, I would expect nothing less. <laughs> all right. Icarath and Shinzo, before he moved, at the end of this small hallway up here, you can see a set of scrolls lining the, the uh, end of this hallway. Three large scrolls hanging down, one on each wall of this dead end. Oh. It uh, seems more useful for you to have them than me. I'm just wondering how badly I want to get stabbed for these. If that's the case. Hold on. 
And then she just walks up there to grab him. Oh my god. Okay, you know what? That's fair. Shinzo, which one are you touching first? As you examine them, you see that one is inscribed with electrical designs, one with fire, and one with ice. Um, he just doesn't think about it and ends up grabbing the fire and electric at the same time. At the uh, uh. okay, he doesn't think. He has a negative one in intelligence. <laughs> He's an idiot. He doesn't think. No shit. <laughs> he just does. As you grab both of them at the same time, one of them bursts into flames. The other one just glows brightly and then crackles into electricity. Make me a deck save at disadvantage, please. Oh, oh, oh my god! Bad. You oh managed god. to you managed to pull away just in time, taking only sixteen damage. The uh, ah. sc- the scroll of ice shimmers before you and then fizzles away into naught but snow. He turns back, comes back. Uh, I could only get you two. Oh, no, they're, uh, they're dust in your hands now. Oh, they're dust too? Oh, so he didn't get nothing. Okay, so far... No, he got fire and lightning in the face. That's it. <laughs> So far, treasure in this place seems um, not so much fun. Okay, well, instead of turning and looking at Icarath, you could just see he just, just smoke coming off of him, and he's just very angry faced and walking off. Okay, maybe. <laughs> All right, hold up. Maybe. Helica. <laughs> huh? As you enter this hallway, you see four statues, each wielding a different weapon. Uh, in each of these little alcoves up here. A spear, a maul, a great sword, and a great bow. I've always wanted a bow. He goes up to it and (laughs) jumps up to try to get it. It uh the bow is made out of stone and is part oh. of the statue. Ah, damn my eyes tricking me. As mm. as you turn away from it, you find a small glowing blue figure standing right here. Double takes. Waves. The f- Hello. The, the figure seems to be made out of runes. Glowing magical energy and inscriptions formed into a vaguely humanoid shape. She reaches out her hand to touch. Uh, As you reach out towards it, it hovers away from you, cackling. Wait, come back. Wait. You're shiny. Come back. (laughs) You're shiny. I want to own you. Come back. (laughs) Quick, let me open this up for you, Chantal, so you can go down there. As you as you yell at it to come back, it turns around and uh, seems to grin. The, The, uh, Arcane runes shifting into an approximation of a smile. Hmm. Will it answer my riddles, or will it be lost forever? I thought that was... <sighs> sure, I'm, I may expedite it. What are your riddles? Of the four statues before you, 
Only one belongs to the king. That's it? That's the riddle. That's the riddle. Uh, goes back to the statues. Uh, I'm going... I want to roll a skill check to, to make... to. I want to roll a perception check or something. Or... To, to try to siphon out where the, the quest marker so I can know what to look at. There are four statues. A spear, right. a sword, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. maul, and a bow. And a bow. And one of these have something in relations with the king. Mm -hmm. um, I look at the heads of these statues. Uh, they're all the same. They're all, they all look like noble knights wearing, like, like, regal armor. Okay, then I look at their postures. They are all the same. Standing wow. upright, broad-shouldered, arms together, clasping a thing. Shinzo looks at the sword, very intrigued, because he loves swords, and he grabs it. It's stone. Tries to pull it. As you uh, as you reach out for it, uh, you grab it, and the statue releases it. But as you uh -huh. pull it away, the stone crumbles away, revealing a rusted old great sword. And as you like hold it up, it actually cracks in your hand, the blade falling apart. He his face goes from, you know, oh this is cool to just instant sadness as he <laughs> sees the blade just crumble. Oh, this is cool. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh no, sword fell down. <laughs> Helica would take the mall next. Make sure you have the right answer. The answer doesn't make any sense. I mean, the question, the riddle, doesn't even make any sense. Repeat the riddle again. Of the four weapons before you, which belongs to the king? Oh, that's that's the um, the spear, of course. The uh, arcane imp tilts its head. Make sure you have the right answer. <laughs> the spear. No, 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 no. The bow. Because I was going to pick the bow. I am I have a noble background. And if I were a uh, queen of sorts, I'd pick the bow. Because I do not want to get in the combat. I have my underlings do that. So the bow, which is right here. She, pick, she goes and picks it up. As you grab the bow... You pull it out, and it turns, the stone crumbles away to reveal a wooden bow inlaid and reinforced with what looks like steel that has rusted away, and the wood is dried and rotten. Hmm. And then it explodes in your face. Ah. Dex check? Dex save? <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Damn. Jeez. You will take Bash. eight damage. Ah, shit. Bash. That's so it's got soot all over her face. Ugh. <laughs> well. Answer me well. Or you'll hey. end up in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't seem too bad. Um, picks the spear next. Takes it off with the, the thing. As you grab the spear, you pull it out, and the stone crumbles away, revealing a rusted metal spear, which promptly explodes in your face. All right. That's, that makes two. But I learned. Yeah. <laughs> She's just gonna grab them all. As you grab them all, 
you pull it down, and it's revealed, as the stone crumbles away, it reveals a dried, rotting handle with just a simple rock as the head. Which explodes in your face. No way. Why? <laughs> <laughs> he just looks at all the statues, looks at the imp, and goes, I hate you! <laughs> and charges <laughs> him down. Oh no. You phase right through the imp. Hmm. Let he this be a lesson, like dears. That. that will stick with you for many years. The king's, Helica. A king's prized weapon is not a weapon, but their mind. <laughs> oh my god! Learn. Oh my god! How did I not? <sighs> uh, Helica, you will take four damage, by the way. What? Uh, from okay. the other explosion. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, you take four psychic damage from the mind-blowing realization. Uh, look, uh, just, nice. she, she just, uh, like, is the imp still there? Uh, the imp has fizzled away. Fuck. Okay. You have uh, uh, How much damage do I take, Hawk? Uh, you took eight damage. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Fuck off. Fuck. I'm sorry, did I make you mad? No. I should have known better, though. The, you think with your mind instead of the, your, your weapons. Alright. Just remember who built this place. Man who built this place is kind of an asshole. That I'm well aware of now. All right, so while you two were dealing with this, I struggle with roll 20. Chantel, mm -hmm. as you come around the corner here, you spot a small satchel with a with the arcane rune imp sitting on top of it. Hmm, suspicious. I will take a check to see what exactly this is first. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll Arcana. <laughs> you can tell that the creature is a force golem. A small, intelligent construct designed to give instructions, riddles, and other such, you know, basically not to actually, like, defend a place, but just to mess with whoever is intruding there. Oh. She looks down at it and says, Well, aren't you a little rascal? What do you have for me? A riddle, if you dare. Oh, I guess. But if I solve this, then give me some more help in this place and my friends. Hmm. An intriguing offer. Very well. Let us see. The imp, the force golem, thinks for a moment. It studies you. If you answer my riddle correctly, which I doubt you will, mm -hmm. then I will give you instructions on how to proceed further. Fail. And I will zap you. Oh, it's always the zaps. I've done it before. 
I guess karma will come around. Go on then. <laughs> What goes? What walks on two legs in the morning, four legs in the evening, and no legs at night? A man. A person. If it were three legs at night, I would have agreed with you. But no. Hmm. That... Did I wait for my chance? <laughs> you you have two more chances. What? Oh yeah, yeah, I have four chances. <laughs> okay. No legs at night. Repeat it again. And she looks around and what? dazes. What creature walks on two legs in the morning, four legs during the day, and no legs at night? Two legs in the morning. Hmm. Two legs in the morning. Three legs at night. Oh, wait. Would you like me mm. to change it up for you? Make it a little funnier. Go ahead, go ahead. Let's say two legs in the morning, four legs during the day, and two legs during the evening. <laughs> <gasps> Oh, uh, she 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 just like looks befounded, just like her eyes are bugging out, and she's having her hand on her chin, and she's like, "Oh, you're a good one, you're a good one." Ooh, let's see, let's see. And she she paces back and forth, and she says, "I've got it, me." <laughs> funny answer. Incorrect, but funny. And she then goes and says, Well, I can make myself look like I had two legs in the morning. What? Three legs in the afternoon? And then no legs if I really had to. <laughs> I could cut them off and be like, Oh, tis but a scratch. And then gone. What's to say about that? Is that not correct? Your very own logic. It could be said about any warlock or mage. Indeed. But there is a very specific creature that I am thinking of. Specific creature? Oh, well, you gave me a hint. Creature, creature. No legs at night. No. Oh, can two, you just... Two, two, four, two. Two, four, two. Yep. You're gonna hate me when I do this. <laughs> would it be? Would it be? <laughs> a creature. Indeed. A creature? Ah, what about a creature of flight with four limbs? And what would such a creature be named? Oh, there's many. Well, we could say an imp, for example. But an imp only has two legs and two arms. But two wings. So? As they fly out in the day. There's two. They don't really use four of their other limbs, right? <laughs> I'm afraid your answer is incorrect. But you are certainly amusing. Oh, the, you uh, two. Can I keep you? No. Oh. He, the imp floats up and t kicks you the uh, pouch. Take that! for being so entertaining. Oh, thank you. How gracious. It won't explode on me, would it? <laughs> Not unless you throw it hard enough. Hmm. Hey, for, 
Okay. And for the record, the answer was Cyndaquil. <laughs> Gone. What in earth oh is a Cyndaquil? What the hell? 242. Wait, 242. Is, yep. that, is that literally... Oh my god. That's, yep. a, that's a number <laughs> in the puppet deck. Two legs as a Cyndaquil. <laughs> four legs as a Quilava. Two legs as a Typhlosion. Mother heck. <laughs> I don't know any of these Pokemons. <laughs> this must be from a creature from another realm, far, far away. I would have never guessed what on earth is a Cyndaquil. Well, I will have to study it later. <laughs> oh dear! Beat the shit out of the DM later. <laughs> I, I can't believe you pulled that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, the pouch has four potions in it. Oh! Uh, one potion of... All of them are clearly labeled. One of clairvoyance, one of gaseous form, one of heroism, and one of frost giant strength. Oh, okay. She, she's happy and satisfied as she walks with a jump and... As she's walking, she turns and sees Ikrath. Oh, look! I've got some potions! I've managed to acquire some by a very interesting friend. Would you like some? Possibly. Is it going to explode on me? No, I asked already. <laughs> I feel like that doesn't really mean anything, but what, what type of potions are we talking? Well, there's... One with labels on it. Well, all of them do. There's one of clairvoyance, one of frost giant strength, and, well, uh, one of... I forgot. Wait, let me read the labels again. What was those other clairvoyance, two? Clairvoyance, gaseous form, frost giant strength, and heroism. Oh, yes. Gaseous form and heroism. I pick all if you like. I don't mind at all. Uh, I'm all right for now, but thank you. We should probably okay. try and find the others. As Shinzo, as Shinzo and Helica, uh, Helica, there is a door there. The <laughs> door standing in front of you is a massive stone. Uh thing with three concentric rings surrounding a single sigil in the center that looks like an eye a single glowing red eye it's not actually glowing it's just painted to look like it's glowing hmm. around on each of the rings are six symbols each representing some kind of beast or monster uh bear wolf uh, bullet, giant spider, uh, some kind of serpent, and a drake. Judging by the way the stone is built, you can tell that these rings would rotate. And the center sigil in the center looks to appear, looks to be some kind of large button. Yep. As as you uh, look into it, you see the same blue arcane imp appear and then swish around and reshape itself into a line that reads in common, solve this puzzle as a true orc would. Oh, my God. Uh. I mean, this is this is the ring puzzle from Skyrim. Yep. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Yo, I'm throwing everything at us. Okay, hey, um... you're finally awake. <laughs> <laughs> you turn oh, around. Goodness. You turn around, black out, and wake up. It's Skyrim. <laughs> Damn it, Todd Howard! You did it again. <laughs> okay. Um. Hello. Hey, you! You're finally awake. Hey, Quinn. Sorry about that. 
What happened, man? You alright? Uh... Went to have a nap. Passed out for a bit longer than I expected and alarm didn't wake me up. Ah. Well, welcome to the world of the living. Yes. I'm sorry you're here. Shouldn't be. I'm happy to be here. Oh, I meant in the world of the living, not in the game. <laughs> oh. <Okay. laughs> Speaking from experience, yeah. this place kind of sucks. Anyway. Uh, I will have Sora catch up with the rest of the party shortly. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, Shinzo and Helica are trying to open a door. Mm. We could just break this down, right, Shinzo? I like that idea. And then he just takes a few steps back and then just stalls Helica falling would ass and full and then, charge into it. Yeah, Helica would at the same time combining strength check. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> All right. Uh, you'll have, okay, Shinzo, you'll have advantage on that. So as you slam into the door, the rings shudder as the, sink, as the central button pushes in Clicks, turns, and the door opens. Hmm. <sighs> My shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> like, I actually did this in a previous campaign. It, no joke, took them about 20 minutes to figure out. Solve it as an orc. Punch the door. <laughs> wow. What's in here? What is in here? Surprisingly, not much. There is only a single thing sitting on a pedestal in here. And it is a large rock about the size of a watermelon that seems to shimmer with otherworldly energy. Oh my god. Okay, I'm going to try to roll an arc. Nope. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can. Um, um, are, um, you, um, are you proficient in Arcana? As a uh, wizard lich, yes. All right. Then you actually would recognize this. What okay. you are looking at as a result of the many long years of arcane studies that you have put into your life what you are looking at is easily the biggest and grandest source of star metal you have ever seen. She uh, cups her hand around her mouth. That, that could be forged into the greatest weapon possibly known to this world. And that is no lie. Star metal for the uh, if Helica and Icarath, or if Chantel and Icarath want to catch up here, they would be able to tell the party with a good arcana check. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Mm -hmm. Oh, what was that loud sound? Are they over there? Sounds Absolutely. Like Let's <laughs> go find them. Are they over there? What else could have made that kind of sound? Yep, it's them. Oh, oh my, what is that? Is that really a... <gasps> Star metal. Oh, wait, wait, what's wait. this? <laughs> no, this is your star metal. <laughs> and... I have no idea what that is. <laughs> well, it's I, I'm working. It's shiny. You know what? I'll, I'll use a luck point to reroll. Okay. <laughs> I, damn it. Come on. Come on. Damn, we you all are... I will let you have Arcana since Helica... I'll let you have advantage since Helica could tell you, hey, it's Star Metal, and you could learn more from that. Sweet. Because otherwise, this uh. is a goddamn disaster. Ah, Star Metal. <laughs> It's a metal made of stars. 
it is star metal is so named because it fell from the stars. It is literally meteorite metal. Otherwise, is that the same material as our rings. Is it? I don't know. I just know that this, from what I read on the way here, starfall ore. Yep. Um, let me think. I know. Um, being a little bit into the market, it's extremely rare and. Quite in high demand. She rubs her hands. Oh, the dwarves! If they could, if they only could see this. But um, I don't know. But the dwarves are all dead. Yes, they are all dead. Um, they're dead as fuck, y'all. This right here is honestly a once in a lifetime thing. I think um, if, if I remember correctly. One of these scholars back at home once said that star metal was reputed to enhance the strength in, of any enchantment placed on the blade. So if you were to somehow put this on, I guess anything, even armor perhaps, you could... Um, basically, actually... basically, to summarize it, uh, putting star metal into anything makes it deal radiant damage. Oh. And yeah. increases whatever other enchantments are put onto it later. So basically, mm -hmm. if you cast magic weapon on a star metal weapon, uh, it doubles the effect. Mm -hmm. Yep. <sighs> right, Shinzo is going to look at the pedestal and see if he can figure out if it's trapped in any way. Because he is tired of things blowing up in his face. You you wouldn't be able to tell. But Sorok, Maybe. who walks in right behind the party, would be able to tell with a good perception check. All right. Do you think a portion of this could be possibly used for your plan? She t she looks at Helica. You know, the thing with the collars. Oh, no, no, no. This this is to be turned to something that's gonna, that should benefit the whole, everyone. I'm not going to use it. Um, but I think perhaps Shinzo or even the captain might find some sort of use for it in their weapons or Whatever their con whatever contraptions they may come up with, <laughs> you, uh, you uh, don't you don't find any traps. I don't think there's any traps on that thing. Okay, and then Shinzo just picks it up. Oh, never change, Shinzo. <laughs> As the pedestal <laughs> sinks down into the ground. Oh, God. Eyeball. No, it just sinks down. Oh. And as it comes to rest uh, parallel with the floor, you see the little pedestal turn. A loud oh. click echoes through the halls. Um. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for a kaboom. Yeah. <laughs> Where is the kaboom? <clears throat> there was supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom. I'm expecting a rock to fall out on us. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so far, it's mostly just been explosions, so... Instant a death traps nice. are a sign of an amateur. <laughs> it would be hilarious, though. <laughs> Save or you die. Will, you <laughs> will get your Indiana Jones traps later. <laughs> Trust Damn me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> anyway. Uh, how exactly do you get this thing open, by the way? How? Oh, we kicked it in. Literally? Yeah. yeah it's had to solve it like an orc. Yeah, so we ran into it. 
out of character, I just realized it's the same trap that you used on me, Hawk. Yes, and it took them significantly less time to figure it out. <laughs> 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 you know what? That's because we have Shinzo. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. <laughs> Actually, it, it was uh, Helico's idea to run Still. into it. Still. <laughs> All right. As Wrath the... is gonna look back at Sora and just be like, "So far, what we found is try not to touch things unless we can confirm, because they seem to zap us or explode." Shinzo, as you exit out into this room, uh, you would find that having appeared in it is a massive sphinx. Squints. Very hard. Oh. That's not good. It's not bad, either. I must test you. Uh-oh. To see your knowledge of ancient materials and arcane components. Fail to answer, and your prize shall be returned. Answer correctly. And you may keep your Well, and he just kind of nods at the star metal. <laughs> he looks down at the star metal, looks back at the group, looks at the sphinx, mm -hmm. and just says, Shit! Uh, Helica's cracking her knuckles, just looking at the sphinx. Not one of mine, I can tell you that. What the hell does he mean by so answer? Uh, we answer the riddle, or forcefully have to. We are going to take away the star metal and perhaps take our lives. Well, not mine, but you all. <laughs> that doesn't sound very much pleasant. Yes, which is why I'm getting prepared to pounce. Don't quite do so. I would say this at least attempt. Okay. Diplomacy, of course. Let's attempt to diplomance the Sphinx. <laughs> All right. The Sphinx looks down. Any of you may answer. But you only have one chance to guess correctly. Mm -hmm. State the riddle once more. This metal is known as the hardest and strongest across the plains. Right. The, sp uh, the Sphinx tilts its head, waiting for an answer. Uh... Uh, yeah. her head. Yes, there's something about uh, us knowing how to use arcane materials correctly, or something like that. Right. I think I'm I'm still a bit of a learner, but I would think that Chantel is a bit of a and Ikroth are the experts of the arcane here. I would agree. Well, I've found out quite soon that riddles are never straightforward. But you know. Hmm. What do you think, Ikira? Uh -huh. It's a tough question to answer. I mean, there's so many options out there. Everyone wants to be the best. Folks Everyone in the chat, folks at home, you're welcome to answer as well. Let's see if you get it right before they do. Everyone wants to say their material is the best, so it's 
it's like, are we agreeing? <laughs> like, because I don't disagree. I mean, as as I agree as... with Chantel. It's probably some sort of trick with what it could be. So, but the problem is, are we meant mentioning for the good things or bad things or what? Chantel whispers to the group. She's like. Unless it's, unless it's actually what Shinzo's holding right now, you know. I'm gonna say, I think there is a possibility that could be what they are looking for. <laughs> hmm. My brain. This ore, when refined becomes one of the strongest metals across the flames. What is it? Bar metal. Incorrect. Uh, the star metal vanishes even... from Shinzo's hands. No, that... Damn it! <laughs> that was... That, no, everyone didn't get their chance to answer. Helica failed her answer. No. Was, you know, everybody, <laughs> what's it, was, it was one answer for the group, I think. Yep. Oh my god, so what now? Let's go uh, back and take it again, and then go back. <laughs> you, uh, you absolutely can. You hear Let's a, go! You hear a grinding and a click, and then as you hear the pedestal rising back up, the sphinx slowly disappears. You'll see us again, buddy, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> I could just get out her damn blade and sharpens it, and sits. Yep. I'm gonna sit right here. If we have more than one chance to discuss it, <laughs> at and least it's... this one, at okay. least this one doesn't explode with the wrong answer. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> as <clears throat> as you take the star medal again, having to go through the door puzzle again, which you... this time we already know what it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, you return to the Sphinx. Holding the chunk of star metal, as it looks down, another attempt. This ore, when refined, becomes the strongest metal in all the realms. What is it? Mm. And refined. I don't, I don't That's a key word. It might be something way more mundane than we thought. What about what about diamond or adamantite? No, no. Right. But that's not a metal. Adamantine is. Adamantine is, but um, actually, it might be more. Okay, y'all can roll Arcana. Oh. Um. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, like, I was right about to ask, can I please roll? Helica and Sorok. Helica's right. I would only know because our place kind of has it in a little bit of deposits and he says. Wait, so the answer of the riddle is a name, the actual name of the metal? Yes, yeah. in the name. Yeah. Yep. I didn't mind. Yep. All you have time. to do is name the metal to the Sphinx. I'm not going to answer. You, you, one of you. <laughs> Adamantite. Correct. Second question. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, I sort of knew something of this would be curry. Favored by the dwarves. This light greenish metal allows any armor forged from it to be lighter than usual. Would I have talked about some stuff with my own folk? My own dwarves? Yeah. Oh, let's see. This one May ought to be a... really fucking easy. Um, I'm just gonna say steel. 
but she whispers it. Um, but I'm gonna make an arcana check just in case. Uh, I'm kind of clueless. Uh, Out of character, I want to say one thing, but then I'm thinking that it's wrong. What's the one thing you want to say? I'm thinking of calling it Grumrill, but that's <laughs> probably wrong because that's Warhammer. That is incorrect, but I'm you assuming, are on the right track. I'm assuming it's Oikalkum. Either that or it's Malachi or Mal whatever no, that's. Or thing Mithril. Is. Or Mithril. Um, Bean, with that natural twenty, you would remember many of the uh many of the steel rats having mentioned multiple times that they would love to have armor with mithril chains. Yep. Oh. Oh. They keep nagging me all the time, and I was going to get it for them, but it's mithril. Correct. Third question. Oh my god. <laughs> it tilt, the Sphinx tilts its head and looks at Helica. Out of five. <laughs> Fantastic. This, this bronze-like metal is capable of holding enchantments with ease. Hmm. When fully charged, it glows with green power. Um, All right, we're going to roll for that because I have not a clue. I'll give you a hint on this one. One of you has already said its name. Or a calcum. Uh, is Sorok saying that? Uh, yeah, fuck it. Historical just like, or Akum? Correct. Fourth question. This material, grown in the deepest forests by druidic circles, is can allow any druid to wear it without angering their natural spirits. Oh my good. What the hell is that? Yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, I'm dummy. I'm dummy. Uh. Can you? Could you say it again? This material, grown in the deepest groves owned by druidic circles, allows druids to wear heavy <laughs> armor without yep. enraging their spirits. Egarath knows something. Yeah. Uh, Egarath. You would know, thanks to talking to Amos Hive Sworn Druids, that they have mentioned a specific type of wood that is almost as hard, if not harder, if grown properly, than iron. Funny bit is that in a character I actually know it, in character I don't. Because this is a very Druid Pacific thing. Well, Y'all are going to hate the last question then. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ikarath would share that with a group and just say, you know, the Druids talked about it, it's a type of wood. I can't quite put my finger on it. Hmm. It's wood. That's hard as iron. Uh, um, uh, uh, literally iron wood, right? <laughs> Is Helga no. gonna say that? I'm scared. I'm scared, yo. Um, would it be... Uh, no, yeah, no, because I don't want to fuck up. Because last time, <laughs> last time you had to go through the whole quiz ag again. Yeah. What's the no. worst that could happen this time? <laughs> you say I feel like I feel like that's a good guess. I feel like that's actually the correct one. 
Go on. I don't. Say it. It's Shinjal, you should just say it. Say it. Say it. Say say what? What's what's your answer, Helica? I will say it. Ironwood. Is it ironwood? Correct. My final question for you. And the Sphinx actually stands up for this one, looking down at the party with a glimmering blue glow in its eyes. You see a faint smile playing across its lips. You are the first in many years to reach this part. I congratulate you on reaching this stage. Okay. This ore, mined and forged in the deepest pits of the abyss, is harder than steel and retains aspects of the planes of darkness, even on the material realm. Can you repeat the last part just one more time? It's harder than steel. And retains dark umbral properties even on the material realm. Hmm. I want to say one thing, but then I don't want to say it. <laughs> What's that? Soul metal. But that sounds about very fucking bare bones, basic ass. Way of calling it. <laughs> it's basically the same stuff that soul coins are made out of. I was gonna think. Uh, yeah, I was thinking that. I was gonna ask, but I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> you would know oh. that what he's talking about. Actually, Bean, go ahead and roll. You're the only one who can make this one. Yeah, you are the only one that would actually know this one better than all of us. Good advantage. <laughs> yep, you got it. Okay. You know Ow. that he's not talking about soul metal. But you do know that soul metal and whatever he's talking about might come from the same area. The lower planes have plenty of deep, powerful mines that bring up the same dark, shadowy ores. Hmm. I know that it comes from the same place, but it's not quite soul metal. I've been studying about the Abyss quite recently, but I can't get my hand on the name. Shadowy. What was it called again? Oh. <laughs> the Sphinx sits there patiently, awaiting the party's response. Could I ask my dear mother? If you she can probably knows. If you can reach her. Uh, where's that sending wand? You have it? Oh, yes. I think I did. I was holding that candle wand. Let's see. <gasps> Blood. Blood. Blood steel. Okay, so I'm going to make a, a sending spell, if I can, to Baba Yaka and ask her, oh, 
name of metal from abyss, not soul metal. Your spell goes out, bounces off of something, and hits you in the face. Oh, man. oh that was not. I want to guess. I'm going to just whisper to the group something of a, some, perhaps blood something. Blood something? Blood something. <gasps> blood iron? <gasps> that's it, that's it, that's it. I remember now, I remember now. Yes. Be, be careful, I don't, I, I'm just guessing, I'm, I'm just shooting, I'm just shooting the shit. I don't well, hey, we know the first four answers, so we'll be okay in the grand scheme of it, right? Okay. Can I ask, are you going to eat us if we get this wrong? No. Okay, then good. Oh, did, 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 uh, how's that, Hawk 22 arc on the arc? You've heard of it. Blood iron. Abyssal no. blood iron. Uh, okay, good. You would know that blood iron is just normal iron forged with the blood of of evil outsiders. This Shit. is this is similar, but something else entirely. Give me the first half of the name. I. It's a type of steel. <laughs> Okay. okay. Even with a twenty-two, I see. Um. Hmm. Goodness. You know what? I, I'm not proficient in it, but let's give it a go. <laughs> okay. Damn it. <laughs> Good job, Shinzo. Can I try one more time to see if I can remember the exact name? You are welcome to try. Nope. <laughs> you remember that it is a type of steel. Does Shinzo get anything? Type of steel. No. Damn. What if it be like Hellfire or something like that? It is a uh, it is a dark, shadowy steel. Mined in the lower plains. Lower plains. <laughs> well, the only way I could think of it is clone it. I like character. The only way I could think of is dark steel, and that's it. <laughs> as stereotypical as that is. Would you like a hint? Please. Yes, please. Yes, please. You were the first group to reach this point in many years. I would say you have earned it. This metal is often used by necromancers and liches due to its ability to hold necromantic energy. Hmm. It also has ties to the planes of shadow. Mm. Let's see. Also, yeah. out of character, the answer is way simpler than y'all are making it. Uh, no. Uh, I I mean, I've been thinking obsidian, it's, but I'm thinking I know of that blood right. steel now, and <laughs> that or bane steel. Because no. I swear to God, if we got blood iron, what's not to say that the next thing up is just called blood steel? Yep. Oh yeah. Um, 
I mean, considering that this is D and D, and the most simplest way of describing things is just upgrading the name, and that's it. I could I couldn't even cheat. This shit is nowhere on the internet at all. <laughs> uh actually it is. It is, it is on the internet. <laughs> uh the answer you're looking you're think that I want is on the internet in exactly one place. <laughs> is it that obscure? Yeah. Chantel's gonna get her mage hand out and her iPhone check out her uh, Google. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. You call this a type of metal that necromancers and liches like to use can contain necromantic energies. Yep. Fade steel? Multi metal? What was that? Fade steel. Fade steel? Yeah, fade steel. No. God fucking damn it. Close. Ah, I'm so... Damn it! It is a shadowy metal. Don't tell me it's literally just that. I was gonna say, no. like, I feel like... I feel like it's gonna be that, and I... No, hmm. it it's oh. not. It's not. <laughs> but what if it is? Hawk's <laughs> laughing. Yeah. You said, you said we were going to hate you for this one. I wonder why. Hmm. If it's that fucking I'm, simple of a name, I'm, I would be pissed. I'm going to ask the Sphinx Is the name of the metal previously said within the words that you just spoke to us? The words spoken contain both words used to make the name of the metal, but have never been used together. Oh god, it is Shadow Steel. Yeah, Shadow Steel. Shadow Steel! The Sphinx furrows its brow. The correct answer is Shade Steel. What? <laughs> everybody, 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 everybody <laughs> go in this. Oh as, my god. As the Sphinx raises a paw, as the party looks like they're about to attack, <laughs> your answer was acceptable. Okay, good. It fizzles okay. out into into glimmering dust. Okay. That was anxiety inducing. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Considering what would a Sphinx would do to us. Yeah. 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 Yes. Shade, steel, Shade steel. Shade steel is a necromantic metal. Uh -huh. Forged in the lower plains from the Eberron campaign setting, and it is only oh. listed oh. as the component needed to create shade steel golems, which are used by necromancers and liches as bodyguards. I need to give me some of that. Yeah, that sounds awesome. It's not as cool as you think it is, it doesn't actually do much of anything. Now it won't even amplify my necromantic powers. I mean, it will, but Ori Calcum will do the same thing, and it's way easier to find. Oh, hmm. gotta give me some of that. So why the hell would anyone use that? Shade steel? Because it's cool. Yes. Probably because it's they're all about the style. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. You think on my holiday trip to the abyss, I should take and find some holiday food. trip. Yes. After I finish with Avernus, I was thinking going down to the abyss. Okay. <clears throat> Don't bring any demons back home. Oh no. Maybe some. Oh, so now we have a big chunk of rock that we could use for purposes. Mm-hmm. 
What purposes can we really use that for? A forge, one of the strongest weapons known to this material plane. Oh no. I was actually if that, thinking. If, if that chunk is raw star metal, and I'll tell you right now as the god as your god, yes, it is. That chunk is going to be enough to forge at least twelve full plate mail suits. <laughs> you can have a that- lot of star metal weapons. We're going to be looking like Saint Seiya. Are <laughs> <laughs> you looking like we're going into a crusade? <laughs> yeah. But I was actually thinking that forge that is no longer in use, that we could possibly use it again for mm-hmm. its function that should viably be in all its earnest work. I could ask some of my steel rats to maybe maintain it, and we can take it there. Right, we Go. did, uh... Hmm? Oh, Ryan is BRB. I was wondering where he was. Yeah. All right. Shinzo, as you turn around the corner, your foot hits a stone and sinks down, and you hear a very distinct... Did he just step on the trap? Uh oh. He's just like frozen in place because he's worried to step off of it. Uh, can, can we can we see what around Shinzo is like? Yeah, Sora for once is gonna look around the room. <laughs> you look around the hallway. You don't see anything. But Sora doesn't. Mm-hmm. It's just stones. Oh. Well, I guess we can continue on. Um. Okay, there's some traps that might have hidden things, such as a giant swinging axe to pop out of nowhere. That, or... a bunch of spears popping out. Or shoot Mm. starts. Ooh. What if we take out one of the tiles in this area and then place it where Shinzo's foot is, keeping the weight? As soon as he would lift his foot, whatever that is going to trigger, would trigger. But if he keeps the pressure on it, and we leave something of that weight? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Thorok's actually starting to try to pull off one of the tiles on where he's standing. They aren't tiles, they're just raw, like big stones. That seem to have like, been fused together. Oh. Well, that's not going to happen. No, no, it's not. Hmm. Sorak is actually going to look through his back. It's oh. not because, like, the one person who could probably move one of the Madama. big stones is the one held in place. Madama! Wait, how heavy is the statue of Umberly? A statuette? Like, ten pounds? Sorak is going to pull out that statue and then try to... Slide it where Shinzo's foot is. Alright. Shinzo, as you step off of it, nothing happens. Huh. Neat. Sigh of relief. (laughs) (laughs) Sorok is actually going to look around a bit more to see if there's any more of those button, button traps. As Shinzo takes another step forward, away from the trap, he taps on a tile, which sinks down. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and I only had one of those! Fucking Helicus is gonna run through... <laughs> triggering Multi- all of them. Multiple clicks and whirs are heard as she reaches the bottom. That's it? That's it. Oh. <laughs> oh. As he just, at this point, pick up his statuette and frowns a bit because it's like, damn it, I thought of a good idea and now it didn't work. 
You might need that in the future. Who knows? Just say, it was a good idea. And we're glad we did it, even if it wasn't necessary. Bye. Uh, oh. that, does that just Alica, look around? As you pass that spot, uh, on the wall, on this little angled wall right here, you see a a relief of a f massive demonic face just mm. staring at you. Its Ooh, mouth is cool. wide open. Yeah. I, I think I played a Tomb of Annihilation. Do not stick your hand in there unless you want to keep it. Uh, just, to, just, to, just to be sure, though. Hold on. Don't stick your hand in unless you want to keep it. Is this? Is there a fucking orb of a, of a fucking annihilation in there? Or yes. Something? Yes, there is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <God. laughs> you sick bastard! <laughs> you sick bastard! No. It's like the That's first. That's so me. <laughs> Don't <laughs> right. call me mean for doing it. Gygax was the one who did it. <laughs> you fuckers. Gygax is the one that started it. You're uh. the one that's supposed to end it. Hmm. But, but. Have you seen I what? I somehow get that orb out of there? No. And put it in the bag. Okay. <laughs> no. Damn it. We could have used that for like a missile. <laughs> Dark is going to carefully walk down this route. Right. Helica, as you enter that small chamber, the force golem reappears. Hello! Ah, uh, you. Me. <gasps> okay, what, what do you want this time? I have a question for you. Oh, goodness. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> How many times did you trigger the switches back there? Uh, one, two, three. I wasn't counting, honestly. I, it was should have been like a dozen of them, perhaps. Why? <laughs> the answer is 35, which is how much damage you're about to take. Lightning suddenly cracks around, the, around Helica and zaps her, oh. dealing 35 points of damage. Ow. No! <sighs> she uh kind of right, takes Dina? a knee. He, yes, yes. Just I'm a bit um and he's gone. <laughs> wow. That um that stung, for lack of a better word. She she helps you up. Yeah, Are you she kind sure? of stumbles. <laughs> yeah, just below fifty percent. But I'll be all right. <laughs> That's uh, not good. Oh, boy, Helica, do you then do you into a trap? Yes, all thirty-five of them. Wait, what? Thirty-five traps. Mm -hmm. How the hell do you get thirty-five traps in a row? Well, You'll be dead well, by now. Uh, you uh, suicide bomb yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's uh? So essentially what Helica just did was just run in and just been like <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Anyway. It's down here. Uh in that little alcove, you see a large statue of a man sitting on a throne, looking down at a spot on the ground. Dorak will look at the spot on the ground. It's just like a spot right in front of him. Mm. I'm not going to tempt fate on that one. I'm kind of curious yet. about it. He would have yet. Uh, Ouch. Uh, Ikarath will take a step forward. Uh, I'm going to cast False Life on myself to give myself a little bit of temporary HP. Oh, good idea. Yeah. I'm going to do the same. <laughs> and, uh, not just that. Um, Ow. As you step up to the throne, 
the king's eyes suddenly glimmer. Oh no. What makes a good leader? Anna. Hey, it's, it's talking to Icarath. A good crew. Acceptable. As the, uh, a small relief at, on the bottom of the throne pops open, revealing a glimmering rapier. So, you want to be the one that takes it, because that's the other one I answered? For now, sure. He'll take the rapier. It thrums in your hands as you hold it. So, <clears throat> up to Helica and Chantel. The two of you stand before a large iron door made entirely out of stone. Multiple symbols are inscribed upon it. A large <laughs> ring with one, two, three, four, five. With 16 sigils, a smaller ring with six, a third sm even smaller ring with three, and then a single one with a simple circle and a dot inside. Arcana. Helica, you would recognize it as a diagram of the planes. <clears throat> Chantel. You would be able to tell exactly which planes are which. Hmm. Oh. Um, this? Let me see. Ah, oh, damn it! Helico's like, is this door knock downable? But uh... <laughs> <laughs> don't. Oh no, dear! I think we must order them correctly in the arrangement that the planes should be. <sighs> door bad. Door blocks. <laughs> <laughs> As you start studying this puzzle, you find that it's really not... They're already arranged in the proper order. Oh. Mm. Okay, I pressed the, the button. You push the button. Braces herself. Runes start to appear in front of the button as a riddle appears. <clears throat> From me, the spark of life originates. That's it. Spark of life. From me, the spark of life originates. Uh, hmm. How many chances do we get this time? <laughs> it doesn't say. It is a door. Hmm. It doesn't know how to talk. Helica looks over, then, huh, water. <laughs> Are you going to push the element, yep. the sigil of the element plane she, of water? She, she broke this sigil. As you are about to, you notice that right next to it is the is the uh, elemental plane of positive energy. <laughs> That's a thing. That is a thing, yes. Yes. Oh. Well. So I will allow you to stop yourself and change your answer if you oh, want. Oh, she, shit. She, as she's about to bro fist the water, she's just slow motion, quick uh, time she, event. Quick um, time event. Um, no, 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 no. The, uh, the, the, the life one. The, uh, the positive energy. 
<laughs> There's the kind of positive energy right there. It could be, could be anything. You have to be careful, dear. As you boop the sigil of the plane of positive energy, it glows. Huh. And then the okay. words shift. From nothing we come to nothing we shall return. Oh, the earth. Click. On what? The earth one. Uh. The door goes out. All of the sigils turn. And it pops up with the first riddle again. Fuck. Okay, she hits the uh, positive energy one. Yep. Okay, alright, alright. All right. From uh, nothing she... shall we come, and to nothing we shall return. She a character, be... think of it like uh, this. The first riddle was the, the yeah. elemental plane of positive. This, the, isn't, the... this isn't just the elemental planes, remember. Yeah, Helica carefully there. looks at the other planes that are listed on this door again. All of them. Including the negative plane. Including the outer ring. Um. You know what? No, the I'm dumb. The I'm gonna go get Captain Sorok <laughs> to do this. <laughs> oh god. Where's, where's the captain? Uh, captain, there's a door over there that needs to be smarted. Uh... Up, up ahead. My my brain is is not it is is zombie right now. It's a uh, yeah. All right, Sorok, just a... Sorok, you have no idea what the fuck you're looking at. Okay, so which one you pick, clicked on first? Um, here the life, one? the positive one positive here. This, this picture right here. This okay, plane. and it's saying what? Out of character, what is it saying? Um, from nothing we come, and to nothing we shall return. That sounds like as it sounds like as if a comment about death. Which, mm. if I had to guess, which one looks like the most undead looking one, or death looking one? Um. The negative energy plane. You'll click on that one. The door goes out. Everything resets. Okay. Which one was the positive? Uh, clicks the positive, and then it, yep. I guess it goes back to okay. Yep. Okay. So it wasn't that one. It's not the Earth either. From nothing yep. we come, from nothing we return. Out of character, is there anything relating to the phlogiston? Uh, no. Yeah, also, the phlogiston isn't part of this. Alright. Okay. Fair enough. I figured to ask. Yep. Hmm. What planes can't, does he see? Like, what What are the each of the images? All of them. Okay, hang on. I'll get the fucking big ass list of. I'll pull out the cosmic wheel. Hang on. Oh, hold that's... on. To look. That that's advisable. All right, yeah. Elysium, the Beastlands, Arborea, Isgard, Limbo, Pandemonium, the Abyss, Carceri, Hades, Gehenna, the Nine Hells. Asheron, Mechanus, Arcadia, Mount Celestia, Bytopia. And then there's the four elemental planes. The four then elemental the two... planes, air, water, earth, and fire. Hang on. Then the two negative planes. Air, water, fire, and dirt. Fucking magnets. How do they work? <laughs> hey. Then there's the positive plane and the negative plane. And in the center is the material plane, surrounded by the Shadowfell, the Feywild, the Ethereal plane. And that's all that's on there. Except, uh, like, below all of it is a single other symbol. 
What is that symbol? Um, you would recognize oh. it as one representing the astral plane. Soul's actually going to try to press that one. Because it's the most outer. And mm -hmm. if anything's ancient as fuck as that question, probably related to that. Yep. As you push it, it glows. And the, the uh, words shift again. Oh, that one was the right one. Hmm. Hmm. Ascend unto impossibility. Mount Celestia. Yep. Yep. As you push it, it sh the words shift again. Perfection incarnate. Mm. Well, wow. that's a bit of a trick question, and yet, and also a very simple one. As Mechanis, which is obsessed with that idea, Rem if I remember being there. <laughs> and what? Oh, there could be its opposite. Out of character, these are positioned exactly as the like. Yes. The okay, good. Yeah, basically, if you find a picture of the Great Wheel, that's what you're looking at. Wait, it said perfection incarnate. Yes. Shit, there's more than one idea for that one. <laughs> there are multiple. But there is one specific one it's looking for. I mean, yes. There is one specific one. But the ones I'm thinking of now is the Feywilds, because the stupid elves think they're perfect. <laughs> uh, then there's Mechanus, then there's Limbo, and then there's the Nine Hells. Because each of those think of they're perfect in some way. As you wa as you stand there deliberating this out loud, the words flash, and the uh, inner planes around the material plane glow for a split second, as if telling you it's one of these. Okay, so if, it's in the, if it's one of the inner planes around the, this weird circle, we're assuming this is our realm. Yeah, the center is the material plane. It's one of the three is around that, it. The one with the fucking fairies are clearly the Feywilds, and the one down there is the opposite of whatever the hell the fa Feywilds are, and then this is the in-between. And what is perfect usually is in-between. As he clicks on the ethereal plane? The entire door goes out and restarts. God damn it! <laughs> I thought oh. we break it down. So, Bert, so... He then clicks on the positive plane, then... No, no. As you start it back up, the words are different this time. Oh, no. The warmth oh. of reality stems from me. Wouldn't that be... He, he clicks on the positive plane-looking one. You are zapped? Oh. For six damage. Ow. What the fuck? Oh, I didn't know it was going to... Uh... Well, I guess that's the wrong one. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, too wrong too many times, and it starts to hurt. Yeah. Oh, now, we should it... try one. Which one is uh, Chantel going to try? The Plane of Fire. As you push down on it, it glows, and the words shift once more. Are you kidding me? Hmm. The opposite of death is clearly the thing that's... Ugh. The, uh, the outer planes flash. Fall. Fall. Oh. Oh. 
outer planes first. Oh, um, shoot. It's one of the outer planes. Fall. Mm. Oh. Oh, come on, I know this. Well, actually, I don't. Uh, mm. You ought to. It's the that. easiest. <sighs> I'm Let's see. I'm... It's the one of these. Question, did the astral plane get highlighted as well? No, just the uh, outer ring. So just one of those is the correct answer. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, was, I was saying the right answer would be to break this door down. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and then it will zap you. <sighs> I'd rather not. You know, the rest of the players are welcome to come and give their advice here. Yeah. Please. <laughs> We gotta use some arcane. Ixrath <laughs> will walk up and be like, "What are you guys doing over here?" This. It's a stupid plot riddle door, and now it's asking me all out of fucking everything. Hmm. So, so you think I can help? Yes. You know, I'm half tempted to just press every single one of these buttons and says it said all. I mean, it depends how much you want to get hurt, I suppose. A coordinated strike would send the door tumbling. <laughs> oh, I don't yes. think that's going to work on this one. As much as that would be fun, I don't think... I agree with Icarath that I don't think it's going to work. They never know to try. You kind of do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, for this, Solark is just going to cast Detect Magic as a ritual, if <laughs> we're giving him the time to do that. I also just want to clarify, the word is all, not fall with an F? No, fall. Okay. Oh. Fall, as in just yeah. fall down. That's that's oh. what I was hearing, but I was... Oh, I they all said fall. all. I got oh, very confused. Oh, oh sorry. I, I thought it was all. I oh, heard no. fall as well with fall. an F. So I um, heard a the A only. So sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> no the, worries. <laughs> hopefully that slims the options down a bit. No, oh, yeah, yeah, that that slims it down to the bottom three that I could think, I think of. I think we can safely clarify that it's not all of them. Um. <laughs> <laughs> What plane is the Orcs realm connected to? I think I think the Abyss. No, it's connected to Hades. Oh. Because Grimsh is kind of the weird one where he's like, yeah, I'm chaotic evil, but I don't want my go guys going to demon realm. I mean, fair? Anyway. Well, the most fun in would... I'm gonna try this one. As he clicks on the nine hells. As he just flinches, I hope to God that he's right. <laughs> you take nine damage as you are zapped. Get <laughs> Okay, okay the dragon's about to piss me off! Wouldn't it actually be the abyss? Because it's infinitely... I was, mm. I was thinking the same. The words shift again. Oh no. Boundless sky. Yeah. sky. That one's easy. The plane of air, right? As That's the you, only one I could think of. As you touch that one, it glows, and sh the words shift again. Okay. Infinite gates in the mist. And the uh, inner planes around the material plane flash. 
Okay. It was Endless Plains? Endless Gates, Gates. Within the Mist. In this case, wouldn't that be the Fey World? No, not. I don't think that's known for gates. It's known for elves and fairies. Hmm. Ah, man, I'm just gonna roll Arcana or something to to remember. <laughs> right. Add a character. I actually want to say what I'm actually thinking, but the thing that I'm thinking of is incorrect. What's that? Or What's probably is incorrect. What? Ethereal plane or the astral plane, but either case, they're both is, basically the same. It is the ethereal plane. And no, they are not the same. Oh, okay. You are, you are correct. There's three options. The Feywild, which it isn't. The Shadowfell, which it isn't. Or the ethereal plane. Yeah, the ethereal plane was the only thing I could think of at it yeah. in as, reality. As Helica reaches that conclusion at the same time, you touch the symbol and it starts glowing. Mm-hmm. Third question. The tree that reaches eternity. That sounds like it could just say... Which, yes, there is a plane that's called Yggdrasil. Actually, I think it's called Midgard. Nope. I was going to say, it's... Uh, you're, you're on the right track, though. Very similar. But not quite. I'm, I'm dumb, so... Uh, is it... Wouldn't it be the, um, one of the good line? It is a chaotic good plane. Elysium? Uh, all right, I'm gonna this... I'm gonna send you all the uh, link that I have here. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yes, please. I thought y'all were looking at it already, but there you go. I wasn't because yeah, I was purposely was trying at. to not look. Uh, to say it's it's not like uh, Isgard. Isgard. Fuck. It's Isgard. Yeah, yeah, Isgard. Yeah, Quinn, you were on the right track. You got it right. As you hit the symbol of Isgard, it glows. Okay. The infinite jail. Well, there's only one thing that has an infinite symbol and a downward arrow. He clicks on the abyss. Are you sure? Boy. Oh, we we already chose that answer. Did I we? Yeah. The yeah, abyss. The answer for the abyss was fall. Oh. Yeah. There is one plane that exists only as a jail. The Nine Hells? Nope. No, 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 no. It might be a Limbo. But Limbo is a chaotic realm. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. This, oh, like, it's just pure chaos. Um, it's not click, really clicks, a... Clicks Canceri. Carceri. I was going to say, Carceri. Yep. As you hit Carceri, it lights up. As the uh, wheels suddenly start turning, clicking, and whirring, the word shifts one last time. <laughs> the Silver Realm and Graveyard of the Gods. Uh... Add a character, I actually know that. Yep. I can't say it, though, because my character doesn't. There is, uh, this one's actually the easiest in character as well, because there's only one symbol that isn't, like, spinning and glowing slightly, and that is the astral plane. Takes it with yeah, both hands. Yeah, it. Fuck it. Yep. As you push it, the door all snaps together and slowly opens. The reason I was hesitant to actually click it is because I knew what it was. <laughs> as, as you look into this room, you find a large 
set of stone slabs holding up a huge pillar with multiple mechanical contraptions poking out of the top and the bottom. The tube between these contraptions is filled with some sort of glimmering blue liquid. And inside, you see what can best be described as a man-sized fetus. That's disturbing. Uh, let me use my necromantic know-how to try to see what the hell this is. Uh, question. Does my detect magic at all come into play at this point, since I could cast it as a ritual? As you look at it with your detect magic sense, your nose starts bleeding. Oh. Uh. Mm. Um, whatever the hell this is, this is really powerful. Oh, dear. Helica puts her hand on the tube. As you do, oh no! Its eye, one of its eyes, opens. A massive bulbous thing that twists around and then focuses on Helica. Hmm. Okay. Why am I thinking of the thing at the end of the Tomb of Annihilation? Uh, Helica taps the taps the glass, I guess. Ah, uh, wouldn't do that. Hmm. Why would this thing be? How could he even survive down here? It well, just, one, it just, it's in a. It just stares at the party. And this one is inside of a tube filled with liquid. I'm assuming this is an unofficial room of sorts. Hmm. As creepy as that sounds. It's not... It doesn't sound not creepy. It's quite uh, a it's, big baby. It, it sounds creepy enough. Uh, well, then... I guess uh, we'll just leave. It's here. Yeah. Is there anything? I'm just gonna look around to see if there's anything that indicates this, what this thing is. I'm gonna roll investigation yeah. to no success. I will do the same. Hopefully, to success. <laughs> as the Definitely party, not. As the party <laughs> looks around, they find multiple. They find a lot of notes written in a language they don't understand. Mm. Well, but this... from what the diagrams on all of these notes indicate, whatever you're looking at is incredibly dangerous. Mm. Should we leave this thing alive? Or no, actually no that don't don't that's maybe. No. I was gonna say Would maybe I... it being in this situation it's in is keeping it not dangerous. Right. Right. Uh, but why is it even... that are dangerous? What is Shinzo doing right now? I just noticed he's not with us. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Uh, yeah, I was just sitting right there. Uh, on top of that, uh, both out of character and in character, I didn't know anything about all the realms and shit, so I would have been no help with the puzzle. It would have been the agreement so, of trying to kick it down. <laughs> would have made that. I know for a fact my character would have guaranteed would have fucked that up in some way or another, and I didn't want to take that risk, so I made the decision just just let him sit here. <laughs> well, if the party would like. They are welcome to roll if anyone is proficient in not in a religion. 
you may roll the check. Well, uh, I'm not proficient in it. Let me check. Yes, um, I am not. Uh, let me get it together. Religion? No. Unfortunately. Heck. Wait, are none of us proficient in religion? None of you are no. fucking priests. <laughs> well, could we roll religion with a disadvantage? No. Dang it. This is something you must have a deep understanding of the gods and the divine to, uh, to know. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah. Um, oh, well. Um, Icaroth, you should make a sketch of this so we can take it back to the to our people topside. We can tell us what Dorok, on the other hand, is just good gathering idea. all these notes. Oh, good idea. Captain. I'll catch mm. up with the with Shinzo. As he just piles them into his backpack and he just looks at this thing for a moment. Ikarath and... is going to study and sketch it. As Sorok leaves. Actually, he wasn't going about to leave. He was going to first, like, place a hand on the uh, tube, like, a sympathy kind of thing, like, eh, being trapped in here is not exactly a fun thing. Kind of, you know, feeling. Do not sympathize with me. Release me. <laughs> uh... The voice Icarus, what's is that you? the voice is in only Sorok's head. Was what me? Okay, that's creepy. What's creepy? This thing? Yes, it is. We knew that. Its hand, it's from the folds of its body. It's reaching out a large hand, which is malformed with thick, burly digits, and a and a diminished limb. It puts the hand against the tube, and as it does, you can see numerous arcane runes crackling along its along the side. Really exactly you, are you? You didn't touch the tube, did what are you doing? It I had a bit of a sympathetic moment. You know, I didn't exactly like the idea of leaving some in its cage for however long, but um, now this is just starting to scare the crap out of me. Well, the question mm. is, what the hell are you? Tell you what, Sorok, if it's something that we should free, we'll come back for it. But, um, I'm gathering a feeling we probably should not. Sorok will try to move his hand away from it. Yeah, it's easy. As the, two, just... of you, as the two of you finish your work, you move on, leaving the strange creature behind. Meanwhile, Shinzo, Helica, and Chantel, as they pass through this area, they would hear a very distinct click, and they would hear a grinding sound up ahead. Oh, no. But as they, as they slowly approach, they would find that they are back in the thin hallways that they were in much earlier. Hmm. That looks familiar. Back the other way, then. Uh, what's going on over there? Uh, take that takes us all the way back to the start of this place, up ahead. Okay. Oh. What's down in this crevice? Nothing. 
No. It is and, empty. Uh, this is so dead end. Yeah. Got it. This is honestly one of the most elaborate maps you've built. I've, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> if this was a, meant to be a labyrinth, this is fucking working. Thank you. I'm glad, I am glad you're keeping track of it because I have no idea what's happening at this point. Well, to elaborate, parts of the labyrinth keep shifting and opening new doors for the party to venture through. Well, I get that. I just wouldn't be able to keep track of it. Oh, yeah. I was applauding you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, thanks, Boo. You're welcome. As the party proceeds into this room, they each go off in their own directions. <laughs> <laughs> the is just looking down this way before he starts moving back over to where Helica and Chantel is. Huh. What a bizarre thing to see the moonlight at, at a constant and while everything hey, around us is just gray. That way it actually leads to here. Huh. Chantel, looking north, you can see at the end of this hallway is an is what looks like a face uh made out of stone on the wall an angelic face with you know mouth closed eyes open and the eyes appear to be glimmering topaz hmm i found a face down here it's dark um, just immediately looks down just don't put your hand in the mouth. Right. No, I don't think I'll do that. Well, actually, see if it has any jewels or anything that you could uh, pry from it. But be <laughs> careful. By the way, has it been ten minutes? Oh, uh, yeah. Damn it. Hmm. Chantel carefully goes up and looks and examines the face a little bit closer at a safe enough distance. Doesn't do anything. Dorok mm -hmm. would come along. Just curiosity. Hey, see if any magical properties are around. I don't the, try that. The eyes suddenly glimmer. Mm -hmm. And the two of you what feel that? a whoosh. What the hell? As Whoa. you are suddenly whip whisked away somewhere else. <laughs> oh, where, where hmm. are we? You thought I was mad about you splitting the party, but it was I, Dio. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, a really weird feeling in my neck about something. Oh, and now I need a vomit. Okay, oh. second. Oh, and it's no problem. Oh. Do you need a napkin? I'm fine. Just teleporting me out of nowhere. It's not comfortable. Oh, here she pets uh, Zorak's bag. Ah! Zorak will look down this corridor. Where the hell are we? I don't know. We've got to get back to our... Well, there's a okay. tea cross over here. As right. he just... Shinzo and Helica, as you look into these two little alcoves, you find statues. One of a grandiose mage, and one of a powerful knight. Uh, Helica standing in front of the mage or knight? Knight. Ah, does it have any weapons? No. Nope. Does it have any inscriptions? No. It touches it. Nothing. You have no idea how tempted I was to just say, ah, it explodes. <laughs> I would have dodged it. I would have did a back up the way. As you touch it, it does nothing. It's it's harmless. Uh, got it. 
No explosions, Madama. Oh well. Okay. Hmm. Uh. Oh. The stone walls continue, and at this point, the three of you over here would recognize that, uh, hey, Sark and Chantel aren't coming. Uh, wait. Someone want to... Where is... Uh-oh. Um... You feel like they it... might be missing, right? The, the, the mask. Let me see. It may have been turned to dust, which will be bad. As you Run. rush back to the mask, you find that it has indeed turned to dust. Oh my god. You son of a bitch. He goes and bends down and like picks up the dust and rubs it between her fingers. I'm gonna uh make a can I make a check? Um, to do what? Turn the dust back into a face? To see if it's humandus, humandus, or lizard. No, it's, oh, not, lizard, it's uh, not lizard. It's uh, It is stone dust from the face that just disintegrated. Hmm. I'm Sounds guessing also cold? topaz as well because the topazes are not there. Oh, where the hell are they? That. Uh, Helicus actually start to get concerned now. Um, hmm. Shit. Can, since, since I, um, am a, a wild surge barbarian, could I use the tech magic? I'm gonna say no. Damn it. Oh, no. Um. We'll find we... him, Helicus. We'll find him. We just need to keep looking. Keep looking. Uh, okay, I'll try as, not to lose. As the three of you are considering your options, the force golem appears in the middle of this lo in the, of this room. All gone, all gone, drifted off to parts unknown. You will return them now. Or what? Oh, uh, um, or else we'll, we'll get, we'll be very, very angry and mean. Oh, I'm certain you will. But that doesn't mean I can return them. But not to worry, they're huh? still here, just in a different part of the labyrinth. Oh. Phew. Is there a way to reach them from here? From here, no. But you can push the right switch and gain access. Uh, okay. Well, let us go to the switches and press them. Best of luck. Best of luck. Oh, boy. What's uh, down this way uh, here? Yeah, this, this thing. You see the two squeeze through doorways, or hallways, and in the center of them, you see a large lever. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Helica is going to do her Catwoman acrobatics to get to the lever. You manage to squeeze through pretty easily. As you pull the lever, you hear a very, very loud grinding sound. Okay. Oh, okay, well. So far, every time we've heard that, something has changed, so perhaps we can access them now. It's deja vu. Something's changed in the Matrix. Uh. Oh, Chantel? Left well, or right? Uh, up to you, Captain. I think I'm gonna talk about the toe. I'm gonna pick that way. Uh, As he goes right. 
have faith we'll see them again. I hope. <laughs> I have faith one, that we will. One can dream. I was about to touch those topaz eyes for a moment. I don't know why I was drawn to them. Do I still have them now? You have the topaz eyes in your hand. Hmm. What do we do with these? Dark is actually going to go down here just to see if this just leads in a roundabout way. Yep. Yes, it does. But it leads to a new part of the dungeon, which he's going to be wanting to explore later. First, it's to reconvene with the party. Right. That okay. is a solid wall. Hmm. Well, this is going to get bloody annoying real fast. However, the solid wall that you're looking at has scrape marks on it. Right. Scrape marks? Yep. Horizontal there has to be a. There has to be a switch somewhere. Right. Because these turn, right? It's good mm. that you've already caught on. As you turn to see the Force Golem uh, hovering there. Oh, lovely. Oh, do you know where our dear friends are? They're... Well, <laughs> I know where they're not. Safe. Mm, she she goes she gives a squint eye at the little uh golem. I kind of want to say that they the two of them are just doing it at the same time. Like, mm. all right, what do these do? And she holds out the topaz gems. Why don't you break them and find out? <laughs> I'd rather not. I'd rather not. Better roll that arcana. Just to see. By the way, what was that giant fetus thing that we just encountered? That is the Atropole. The fuck is an Atropole? The f <laughs> <laughs> The afterbirth of a dying god. That's a dead god that's a fetus? It is... was... supposed to be divine. It certainly didn't succeed. Okay, why is it here in... It's here so that it's not elsewhere. I'm guessing there's a story behind that. There's a story behind many things in this labyrinth. Add a character, and now I'm tempted to ask if you're ever planning to do a Tomb of Annihilation game. Nah. This is the closest thing to it. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, this is the closest closest thing to hinting that you might. <laughs> God damn it. That's one of my favorite campaigns that I want to try to be a player in. As... The Force Golem looks the looks the two of you over. It tilts its head. So what will you do now? Well, she looks at the Topaz gems, unsure what they really do. And she says, well, we'll just explore around and hope for the best. We'll find the, sw we'll find the switch to open that thing. Yes. So you might. So you might. But you just as easily might not. Well, we'll take our chances and have faith in our friends who will do the same. Oh, so touching. <laughs> Good luck. She yeah. puts it before it goes away. You're gonna need it. Ha <laughs> Hmm. All right. So are y'all... All right, so Icarath, right north of you, you see another face. This time with glimmering sapphires for eyes. Uh, y'all might want to come see this. It's another face. 
Another face. Hmm. Based on the fact that our allies are gone, I'm inclined not to touch this. I'm going to look in my my memory banks in my head to see exactly what these things are, these masks or whatever. Damn it, do I don't make it. They're, do uh, they're just very ornate faces carved into the walls. That's it. Hmm. On the other hand, those are some nice sapphires. Right. Hmm, maybe... Shinzo, roll me a wisdom save. <laughs> awesome. Those are really nice sapphires, Shinzo. You should go collect them. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm so mad. He that just it. walks <laughs> up and freaking tries to snatch them. As you touch, go. as you touch the sapphires, you feel them pop out into your hands, and then Helica and Icarath would just see him go. <laughs> what? Shraggy. <laughs> well, on one hand, I'm glad my inclination was correct. On the other hand, damn it. <laughs> Hmm. Damn it indeed. Well, on one hand, my assumption was correct. On the other hand, this is a hell of a lot worse. <laughs> no, wait, no. <sighs> on one hand, I was right. On the other hand, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if we, we find another face... <laughs> if we find another face, no one touches it. Hmm. Well, Shinzo. Funny, Shinzo, you have landed in a room with a hallway leading out, and as you glance around, you see three, the statues of three warriors. And one of them looks suspiciously like you. The other two, as you get a closer look at them, look like his brothers. He walks up to each one and kind of you know actually inspects them to make sure they're what he thinks he's seen yep crashes his head in complete shock and disbelief and is just thinks to himself I need to figure out who Put these statues here because they they have to know something about me and my brothers. And then starts running through the hallway. As, as you turn around, you find the force golem there, hovering in the center of the room. Oh, it's not a good idea to touch treasure, not unless you're absolutely sure. Uh, he does. He still have the uh the sapphires. Yeah. He just looks down at them and then like shows them to the golem. But look, they're so pretty. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. And you fell for it. Still, Do not judge me. I find it fascinating that you came back here of all places. What do you know about me and my brothers and these statues? You and your brothers were one of Mordenkainen's little experiments. An experiment that went somewhat incorrectly. What exactly do you mean? I don't know the details of the experiment myself. But from the loud swearing and anger that I heard from him the last time he was here doing the test, a long time ago, 
he attempted to split the aspects of a single man apart. To split off a person's anger, their fury, their sorrow, their kindness. Splitting a single person's emotions into another individual that would embody that, those aspects. Apparently, he failed or succeeded, depending on your point of view. And these three statues were the ones who were how you say the successful prototypes he just cannot believe what he's hearing right now and he looks back at the gong so you mean to tell me that the only reason I am alive is because the old man wanted to split someone up and I am one of the, the pieces? More or less. Granted, when you were one person, you were a willing participant. It's just that... Well... Unforeseen complications happen when you're doing experiments with radical magic. And, uh, what exactly failed? You and your brothers don't remember your time before the split. You were supposed to, but you didn't. The idea... So who... Oh, sorry, continue. Uh, go ahead. Oh, he was going to ask, uh, so who was... Well, who were we before we split? I believe your combined form's name was Angron? Something like that, at least. It's been some time. Perhaps. No. I remember it was something having to do with being angry. Beyond that, it has been m many, many years. Hmm. Well. If it's angry, then it kind of makes me think of... My brother Frenzy, you know, kind of makes sense. <laughs> but I don't think that is a name of an individual. Indeed. Now then, what are you going to do about your current predicament? Well... I'm going to find this old man, and I'm going to get me some information. Good luck. And the golem vanishes. He turns back around with a determined face and then just stops, you know, running, but also... Looking down every corridor, trying to see where all everywhere goes, <laughs> you know, all that. Yeah. All right, 
Quinn, you want to complain. You're you're sputtering like you want to say something. Yes. I just texted you. Yeah, I saw it. I'm not answering it. Oh my god, I swear to if god, motherfucker. I don't I, I'll be honest, I actually forgot what name you gave this character, Shinzo. Bruh. Oh, and that's... you will close. Change the N to D. And Grodd, oh. that's it. Yes. Uh, here. Yeah. That would have been like, wait, the demon? The demon boy? That that's. Oh, uh, no, name. no, I... Okay. Like, uh, like, like, as I was, as you were doing that, I was like, shit, what is his actual name? Is no. It Angron? <laughs> no, I don't think it's Angron. Fuck. Um. 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 I was getting worried there for a Dude, second. Okay. <laughs> when, when you said I was uh, an experiment of Mormon kind and it's like literally fucking mind blown, dude. <laughs> oh shit! I mean, I did tell you you got full creative rights with it. I know. So. Been planning this Damn. for years. <laughs> and Grod. And Grod. Okay. Yeah. I was getting worried there for a second that it was Angron from Warhammer. No. The no. demon pride mark that no. fucks everything up. Um Shinzo, as you approach this uh, the end of this hallway, you find a solid wall with like grooves and like rough marks on along the edges. Um, as you th this one right here, uh, well, no, where you just were, oh, this one, uh, in this one right here, okay. in here, you would actually find a couple of pouches, as the center pillar here is a, uh, it has like actual like stone shelves, and you'd find a couple of scrolls and some good potions, as well as what looks like a bag of holding. Um. Okay, he's going to grab the bag of holding and tie it up kind of next and on the same rope of his other bag of holding. Okay. And then fills that one he just got with all the scrolls and potions and all that because even though he can't read, he knows he can get someone else to read these scrolls and see what they're about. Gotcha. All right. The rest of the party, you may continue moving. I will be monitor monitoring you. Okay. Uh, this is another tight thing. Fit yeah, in. you can just pass through it. Uh, okay. Just... I'm okay. gonna. I'm. I'm starting to cut back on traps because, like, we're running a bit late. Ah. Uh, can I also fit through it? Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Hmm. Curious. I wonder if the piece of eight is truly in here. It she, probably she is it. behind a trap or something. Hmm. It's a mess. at the end of this hall? At the end of that hall, beyond that little sl uh, that little sliver there, you can see a large lever embedded in the wall. Well, but if that's the lever. Pull the lever, Sorok! Sorok is actually going to try to slip through that uh, little crevice. Yep. Genny? Yep. Alright. Wrong lever! And, and then, mm. uh, he does pull the lever. Uh, you pull the lever. You hear a grinding sound somewhere nearby. And, uh, Shinzo... What you see unfolding before your eyes is the wall itself turning to reveal a passageway. He just kind of looks down and puts his uh, hand on his forehead and rubs. This place confuses the crap out of me. <laughs> and then continues on. <laughs> All right. I think that Helica, Helica, Nicarath, at the end, at the end of this hallway, you find another face. This one with rubies. <sighs> 
Do it, do it, do it, do it. You won't. You grab one, I'll grab the other. Deal. Uh, Madame, go wait for me at the entrance. Okay, Helica grabs a, a grabs one, and at the same time as Ikra. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. What? <Damn it. laughs> <laughs> well, at least we have a ruby now. Yeah. Hmm. And then fucking run into Madame V because it was like literally the entrance. <laughs> well then. That's, uh... <laughs> King, would you do the thing? Roll 20, please? Thank you. It could have definitely been worse, just saying. That, that's true. That's true. Um, but let me think. Maybe we should head down this way. Oh. Yeah. Minecraft. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Uh, this has been an intriguing dungeon. Yeah, like honestly, one of the most brain matter and like melting inducing dungeons. Please tell me this actually changed. What? Nope. Start of up. <laughs> What's this here? What's what? Oh, that's uh, just a small, skinny hallway. Kind of similar to the one that Sora was slipping through. Mm. Talk up here, there's nothing in this little thing. Um, What you find in that little alcove is just some hieroglyphs along the walls. But they're like, str like scrawled in. And you recognize the language as Sylvan, which would make sense because Lepis. Yeah. You may not be able to read it, but you can tell it's just graffiti. Got it. What's in here? <laughs> yeah, what's in here? This is another, like, little laboratory area with shelves along the stone walls. Ooh. In here, you find some basic stuff, basic lab equipment that looks kind of old as well as a glimmering scarf that seems to be woven with shadows. Hmm. Nice. Interesting. Chanto would pick it up. Yep. Feels nice. Shinzo, you ah. would see Helica, Ikarath, and Madama V down the hall. What the at this whoa. at this point, Sorak is just like, well, I don't know what to do. Hey, uh, Chantel. Yes. You may have not been able to send a message to your your great mother, but can you send something to within somebody inside of this labyrinth? Hmm, I hadn't thought of that. Let's do that. Um, she's going to put a message of sending hoping the nearest person other than us will receive it and says um where we're stuck no switch please find one hmm. all right as Helica and Madame V go up into this alcove, they would indeed find a large switch, and right before they're about to pull it, they get the message. Hmm. That's, that's a familiar tingle. Oh, they're stuck. Okay, pull switch. You hear very loud grounding, grinding behind you. Oh, what? <laughs> that stuck. Oh, fuck. Ikarath <laughs> just runs up to the wall, seeing it move. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Chantel, oh, my God. Chantel and Sorok, you can hear the sounds up there. Banging as on the a party, wall. As the party is fully reunited. 
Except for Helica. <laughs> Where's okay, Helica? I finally oh, can do my rage out on this wall. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start punching the wall. <laughs> so good news, bad news, kind of thing is we found our way to each other, except for Helica. <laughs> if we're at this point at the wall being pounded. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Shinta goes up to the other side hey, of the wall uh, and just Chantel? starts swinging. Uh, Chantel, can you tell her to now just once we get through, once we're over hey, here, Bob, please give me advantage. Uh, <laughs> To uh, well, more or less, pull the lever again. Yeah, we pull just need. Lever. We just need all of us to get Wrong through. Wrong lever! <laughs> Icarus, hey, come in, squeeze no, between. No, no, no. Shinzo literally can punch through the wall like the Hulk. I guarantee you, you can't. Uh huh. If he or if Helica pulls I mean, the lever, he did try. <laughs> the way it'll turn. Oh, we'll be I back can pull the, the lever hallway. again, right? Yeah, it'll be oh. back down this hallway. So if okay. you all come over this way, as you pull the lever again, it turns back. Yeah, allowing yeah. the party to be together once more. I messed my knuckles okay. up. Okay, I'm hitting this dungeon more and more. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I've done I'm... my job. Like, like, Hawk, this literally feels like a dungeon out of Pokemon. Like, I don't know why. It just feels like Mount Moon all over again. All right. uh, For me, it feels like fucking going through... Going through one of my old 2nd D D&D GM dungeons, which is very, very, very bad. Well, not bad. Okay, okay. well, I didn't it's get It's not bad in your case, out. Hawk, because you're doing it without killing us. As... As Shinzo wanders into this big room, three statues stand on either side, on each of these larger alcoves. One is of a maiden wearing ornate mag mystical robes and holding a large staff up. The other is of an angel with glorious wings that seem to be made out of stained glass, holding a hand up. The third is a demon whose wings seem to be made out of some kind of blood-red metal, holding its arm out. wonder what's going on. What if the rubies are, or the gems are connected to this? Actually, let me roll what? smart. Uh, there, you can tell that just by the resonance and magical energy in the air, they're probably not. Hmm. Eh, that was a guess. Alright. Well then. Mm. What is Le Party going to do now? Touch the statue. Touch everything. I'm going to observe uh... and see if they're recognizable in any way. Dorka's gonna do one more detect magic with the ritual. You detect a fuck ton of magic in here. Well, that's a lot of magic. <clears throat> as for the indicate, as for the as for the figures, Chantel would recognize them. One of them is just a she would only recognize it as an angel. The the other she would recognize as Asmodeus, the Lord of Fiends, and highest pre highest uh prince of hell. But the woman she would recognize as the previous goddess of magic. Oh, Mistral, mm -hmm. Mistral, Mistral. Oh, that Mistral. is ancient. 
Asmodeus, and an angel that I cannot recognize. These are very powerful figures. Are they waifus? Possibly the other two. Hmm. But long, long ancient. And almost primordial, you could say. Yeah, not really, but... Uh, let's think. Mm, hmm. The significance of these figures. They represent... Well, just from guessing, they represent three different principles. Good, neutral, evil. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a guess of the woman's neutral and the angel and demon are obviously are um, evil or good and evil in respectively. Although if you ask me, both of those two are evil in their own rights. Hmm. Hmm. She goes around and just, uh, I think it'll be okay if we just touch them. See what they do. Shinzo's gonna walk up to the angel and curiously, like, how how is the angel's hand out? Is it like palm up or? Uh, it's like palm down in like kind of a commanding or casting a spell fashion, like fingers outstretched, gesturing towards something. He's going to curiously put his hand under the angel's hand. Look, as you do, the angel's hand gently grabs yours. Oh. Kind of jumps in shock, but doesn't pull the hand away. <sighs> The angel statue gently moves to look down at Shinzo. What do you believe is best in life? Hmm. That's uh, very difficult to answer though so many things. But I would honestly have to say peace. What sort of peace? Mm, more or less self-peace. The, uh, the kind that you can wake up every day and just live your life without warring. Without feel. The sort of peace you seek is self-actualization. To know who you are. And to live accordingly. Suddenly, what's the statue holding his hand is the devil. And the rest of you would notice all of the other statues have suddenly shifted positions. What the hell? Uh oh. Tell me, what do you fear the most? To witness the fall of my friends, knowing I can do nothing. <laughs> So quaint. Selfless, but quaint. It shifts again, and this time the statue of Mistral is holding his hand. And what would you do with power? Oh, uh, well... I mean, I kind of already have it, <laughs> but if I had more, I'd make sure more people had the peace that I would like. 
stop the ones doing bad things to people who do not dissolve it. And in my free time, drinking a fuck ton of ale. The three statues look at each other. There is a pause. The quiet seems to penetrate even the stone walls. You may pass. Your friends must prove themselves separately. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> this is a test. Well, hope you all have studied your exams. <laughs> hmm. If such case is true, there really is no wrong answer. Just be yourself. Eh. Could be. But what if yourself is an unlikable itself? <laughs> yeah, that is, a, that is a good question. Well, I, I'll go. I'll go and put myself on the chopping block. Which one? Come first? on. Um, I'll go from good to evil. All right. As you uh, grasp the hand of the angel, he holds yours in return. You are tainted by darkness. Mm. We cannot allow you to enter the vault. What? I, I, I took the shot. I took it. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, fucking damn it! <laughs> 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 but she, she, she's like, wait, wait, no, I'm, I may be Phyrexian, but that doesn't, my heart is pure. You can see, even though it doesn't beat anymore, but I mean, it's still there. It is not a matter of if your heart is pure or mortal or undead. Okay. It is a matter of your desires. Ah, oh, uh, and there's probably a matter of your free will. Um, uh, my will is free. I'm, I'm, I'm free as a bee. The desires we sense from you are not your own. Uh, yes, I, I, I choose what I want to. Eat, what I don't eat anymore. I haven't remembered the last time I chose anything to eat, but. I can assure you that I, this hand, I can raise a hand. No one's telling me to do it. See? They uh, are blocked for now. But someday they will not be. And the power we can grant cannot be allowed to fall into those hands. Oh, you mean the weird thing that I have going on? That's just um, some outer... Some entity trying to contact me to do something they're bidding, and I won't do it. You know, I have. Yes, I in my in the back of my head, there's this thing urging me to perfect everything around me. It, is the that statu what you're the statue lets go of your hand and returns to its original state? Wait, 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 wait! No, 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 no! Look, that I can control it. It's not who I am deep down. I can prove it. This is why I kind of think that an angel and other creatures like these are kind of evil in their own right. They don't give you the chance to prove your destiny's not set in stone sometimes. Right. Not that, the, uh, uh, Sorok, glancing over at the statue of Asmodeus, would see that its hand has turned into a handshake and it's looking directly at him, grinning. Well, you're up. 
captain. Why does it have to be the evil one first? Oh, well. And he then looks back at the angel like, eh, I know, it was a bad choice. So? He hesitantly grasps the hand of the, <laughs> the devil, essentially. What would you do if you found out it was all a lie? What the hell would I do? Yes. Who the fuck cares if it's a lie? The statue actually seems taken aback by that. I do what I do best. Be me. <laughs> The statues shift, and it's the angel holding your hand. And who are you? Well, I'm not some goddamn fucking soul in this one and take over my body, that's for damn sure. Excuse me? What? No, not like you. I'm talking about my grandfather. Oh. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> that was so pure. <laughs> I'm a free individual. I choose what I want with my life. <clears throat> no god, no demon, no angel, no nothing's gonna tell me what to do. I am me, and that's all that matters. Not even my own grandfather will tell me how to be me. But who are you? I am Sorok! Who else could I be? And who is Sorok? A pirate, a captain, a friend, and a man who seeks freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from everything that wants to chain me down to a destiny or a path. Freedom from from the very things that tried to demand me to obey them when I have the right to choose what I want to do with my existence. And what is it you want out of your existence? That one, he actually stops for a moment to think. That one... I uh, thought of at the end of the day. But... Hey... What's the chant? What's not... What's not more fun than just jumping off the cliff and try and hoping to God that you don't or hoping to whatever existence you you chose, you don't die. So your desire is the freedom to do whatever you wish, regardless of what anyone says. Or of yes. what anyone else believes. Yes. Mind you, I'm not going to be an asshole. But, yes. So, Sorok, the captain, the friend, is whatever he wants to be at any given point in time. If that's what I believe in, at the end of the day, I do. Yes, it's my choice to be who I am. If I want to be friend and elf, I'll be friend and elf. If I want to be friend a, a demon lord, I'll do that too. I don't fucking care. No god, no... As I always say, nothing will tell me what to do. 
the three statues look at each other as the angel releases you. Ow. Ow. You are too mercurial to be given our gifts. Not mercurial. You believe in freedom, but the type of freedom that represents utter chaos. Freedom oh, to do Christ. whatever you wish, whenever you wish, however you wish, with no with no rules except those that you set yourself. The power we offer is too dangerous to be given to someone like that. You know, you claim to be all about good and all. He claims to be all about evil, you know, and I don't know what the hell she represents other than neutrality. But you're telling me you're all about law and obeying rules all the time? You're yelling at a statue at this point. <laughs> this just in. Old orc yells at statue. <laughs> Young orc, or well, middle <laughs> age. <laughs> Damn statues! Tell me I can't <laughs> get get into their shit. Yeah. When I was your what age. Does anybody else know. want to take this test? Sure. Ikarath will step forward. To which one first? Uh, Angel. All right. As you clasp the hand of the angel, it clasps back, and it looks down at you. Have you made your choice? Yes, I have. And what is your choice? To save the thing I'm told I shouldn't. You were raised amongst a cult to believe in the power of darkness. You would go against that. Yes. It sh the statue shift, and now you're holding the devil's hand. And why is that? What are cults? What are people? Seek is respect. For such a long time in our history, we have done it through bloodshed. When that does not need to be the way to do it. We're led to believe that darkness is the way because the Gwaddle are not around. But if they are. If they are a source for us. Let the Yanti choose darkness or light. But let it be an actual choice. That is why. The statue shifts. Revealing the statue of Mistral. And you would be the one to grant them this choice, should you be given the power to. If me getting the power is able to get one Yanti that choice and make it a viable option. It is worth everything. We do not believe you are worthy of the true gifts within our vault, but we can sense the spirit of the Kowatl within you, and we sense that you have 
the parts necessary to complete and achieve your goal. You may enter the secondary vault. That Thank leaves you, Shantae. Hmm. She goes straight up to the angelic one. The angelic one looks down at her as he clasps her hand. I don't really desire much at all, but I always, well, I just want to ask, what are you? Who are you? What do you represent? We are representations of the most powerful forces in the universe. At the time of our creation, at least. We are used as a judgment mechanism to ensure that no one unworthy is granted access to the vaults of the Labyrinth. Well, my curiosity is sort of sated, but test me, go on. There is no need to test you. Why? You are already worthy. And why is that? You bear the mark of a Kolia root. In... where? It is on your soul. I know my brother is one, but not me. <laughs> That's ridiculous, right? Yes. If your brother is a Kolia root, then he is the one that marked you. You are recognized by our Creator, and by us, as a being worthy of accessing the Outer Plains. While we cannot <laughs> allow you into the external vault, or into the most interior most vault, you are welcome to enter the secondary one. And there is no possible way that the love of my life will be able to join? I'm afraid not. Just because I, I am, um, because I'm Phyrexian. <laughs> Isn't that a bit unfair, a little bit outdated, as you said? Everyone here seems to be at least somewhat. Your beloved is powerful. And were it not for the external force clawing at her soul, she would undoubtedly be worthy. But as mm. long as that external force grips at her and attempts to control her, we cannot risk these powers falling into her hands. Then ask me this. Is there anything within this labyrinth that will... Perhaps aid in that clawing nature, that other worldly powers. Gonna, that is I'm, what? What? Yes. I'm going to say, if there was, I probably would have felt something by now. But honestly, these three guardians are valid in that, and and honestly, this is a battle that only I can fight. So. There is an option. There is? In the secondary vault, there lies a magna gate. You What's may that? use that to find the entity that is clawing at you. Uh. Oh, and I as I have just stated, Miss Chantel, you are welcome to enter and claim that gate. I will then. I'll get it for you, dear. Good. The statues, well, the statues return to their original position. Hmm. That was very informative. Hmm. All I'm right. not really too sure what they got against about freedom, but... This is it. <laughs> Alright, so in this small circular room, which is the secondary vault... You would find 
some basic items. Uh, basically, I'm going to give you the list of the magic items. And I'm guessing like, Sorok is the only one that cannot enter? Uh, Sorok and Helica can't go in. But, cool. uh, Shinzo... Oh, I thought... What? I thought Sora could... I must have misheard. No, no, he was that right banned. <laughs> he got banhammered. That's too much freedom. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that Sora uh, fundamentally went against everything that lawful things go for. Right. You're like, no! <laughs> You're a bad. You're a bad boy. You can't do that. As as the party collects all the magic items up here. Shinzo, if you wouldn't mind. You see a shimmering blue field that only Shinzo can pass through. Shinzo. As you pass through, you find a huge area. It looks like a large, round, oval-like room with four huge pillars, each one inscribed with one of the element with one of the four elemental planes. You know, air, water, fire, dirt. And in the middle are a bunch of fucking magnets. Anyway. In the center are is a small ziggurat rising up in multiple layers. And as you approach, you can see a small, brilliant, multicolored fire burning at the top. As you approach it, everything goes quiet. It is almost silent as you look at it. As you feel the raw energy radiating from this flame. As you feel the power coming off of it. And as you walk up to it and look down at it, it looks like just a simple ball of fire burning in a, like, burning on its own. And you feel like you could take this fire and do something with it. What are you going to do? He's going to like take it up and uh like what what does he feel like when he's holding it in his hands? As he holds the fire in his hands, he can feel intense, immense power. Power that seems to resonate with the planeswalker spark inside him. He's going to kind of bring it in to like I'm assuming that resonates in around his chest. Yep. And he's going to see if he can mulch it with the spark. As you pull the as you pull the flame into yourself, you feel it surge outwards. Surging through your body. And as you do, you feel your mind start to lash out, trying desperately to grab onto something as it's thrown about by the sheer power within this flame. What concept, considering what the, the conversation that Shinzo just had, what concept would he be grasping onto to steady himself? Talking about the uh, the aspects with the statues? Uh, uh, no, just anything. The, 
What? Oh, the uh, like the elements or well, whatever. No, like Shinzo. Like what makes Shinzo okay. Shinzo? Like what makes him him? Um, he's going to hold on to that feeling he had during all of the battles in his life of I've got to make it through this. You know that that perseverance, that feeling that he always had of I have to get through this and make it on the other side and he's gonna hold on to that feeling and try to just keep fighting through it that is a damn good feeling to hold on to shinzo i need mm -hmm. you to first make me a wisdom save to hold on to that thought You can feel your mind being pulled, but as you focus on that one thought, you manage to grasp onto it, as the fire seems to recognize it. Now, I need you to make me a constitution saving throw. Okay, can I do one more? Your body erupts into the golden prismatic fire as you take 37 points of damage. Now I need you to make me a strength saving throw. Okay, sorry. Just had to calculate that damage. You said strength? Yep. <laughs> Hmm. As, yeah, so one stat I got. <laughs> as you're, you feel the flames as it tears through your body start to rip your very existence apart as you have to steady yourself, physically pulling yourself back together. As you look down at your hand, you can see radiant energies coursing through it, your hands vibrating and shaking, trying to hold all of this energy in as it merges with your being. As you do, your mind simply is just having trouble comprehending exactly what you're seeing happen. Make me an intelligence saving throw. Uh, can I use second wind before I do that? Because <laughs> that is bad. Uh, yeah, I'll let you do that. <laughs> okay. Um... One D ten plus level. Okay. Boop. You manage to catch your breath in a lull, staring down at yourself oh, God. in confusion. But you manage to stay alive. But oh, as yeah. your mind is sent reeling by the implications of what you're looking at. You can barely even comprehend it. Your intelligence is permanently reduced by one point. <laughs> no. Ugh. Oh. And finally, as your body starts flailing about, muscles and nervous systems seeming to realign randomly, you man you can just barely manage to keep yourself together. Roll me a dexterity saving throw, please. Fortunately, you manage to figure out how your body is reconnecting and reconfiguring itself pretty quickly and manage to hold it together just long enough. And finally, still holding on to that feeling, still holding on to that belief of perseverance and survival. You feel one surge rushing through your soul. I need you to make me a charisma saving throw, please. You feel your planeswalker spark get snuffed out. But in its place is something greater. A pulsating, beating spark of raw unfiltered planar power. 
Congratulations, Shinzo. You have gained a rank of divinity. You are now a legit demigod. Holy shit! Uh oh. Oh, oh <laughs> fuck. Good. He's not only immortal now, but he's. Oh fuck. That was not a lie when I say, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> That's no longer a lie! Yeah. That's no longer false! Uh, also, Shinzo? Alright. Just to give you. Uh, oh okay. my god, this is just. Oh, holy shit! Holy shit! Hang on, oh hang my... on. Before you go off, Shinzo, pick two of your scores. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, shit. My strength's good, so I think I'm going to have to go with intelligence. And dexterity. All right. Increase them both by four. You could have pus pushed your strength. Would you like past to? 20. Would you like to change one of them to strength? <laughs> you don't have strength. No, I'm good. All right. Because I, I just like it, it's sitting at twenty already. Yep. So, I mean, yeah, I could push it past that, but I feel like 20 is a good stopping point. Mm -hmm. All right. And you will gain one saving throw of your choice to gain proficiency in. Just pick one you don't already have. You got it. Wisdom. There you go. I'm tired of getting mind control. <laughs> <laughs> I really am, dude. Like, I how many times has it happened to me? Uh, a lot, <laughs> Like, yeah. every, every time. All right. As the party is finishing gathering up their equipment and all the stuff in here, Icarath, you look at the last little chest in this vault, and you can feel it calling to you. You already know what's in it. And as you pop it open, I have to remember which ones, which parts of the Kowadl you already have. I think it, I think he was it getting was the scale. We have the one. mantle and the staff. Right, and this yeah. one scales. Scales yeah. is what we were told. So. Yep. As as you pop it open, you indeed find the scales of the Kowatl Herald inside, glimmering brightly, ready for you to claim them. And as all of you gather back outside, having found all of this cool shit, except for no piece of eight. Shinzo steps out of the glimmering field, and all of you can feel his power. Um, Shinzo, I think you're gone now. Uh, what do you mean? I've always been a god. I... Yeah, but I mean, like, I'm just a battle god. <laughs> Something. Okay, well, that's fair. <laughs> okay, well, that's fair. I, I guess. Um. What? Just out of character. So you know. Out of character. When we're done, I'm gonna fucking fanboy out and just explain what the fuck just happened. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, oh, I was I... actually so scared because when I took that 47 <laughs> damage, I went down to 47 health. And I had to make the intelligence save, you know, negative one, and wasn't proficient in it, so very bad. And that's why I was like, yeah, I, I need this freaking <laughs> healing. I was so scared I was going to die again. As the party 
starts moving out, uh, marveling over Shinzo's new form, looking over all the cool shit they just picked up. Helica and Chantel would be looking at the device in their hands. A box covered in, made out of what looks like gold or brass of some kind, inscribed with countless tiny runes, each pulsating with magic. Hmm. Pretty sure this is the Magna Gate they were talking about, but I have no idea how to use it. Hmm. We'll find out. When we get back on the ship, perhaps. As you feel the the Force Golem appear next to you, <gasps> you hold your hand on one side of it and designate a location or plane that you wish to visit. It will then open a gate to that plane. I'm guessing it's unlimited use. One use per day. Oh, well. Okay, well, that's fair. Hmm. I'm glad we finally don't have much to actually guard around here anymore. Thanks for getting rid of that spark of divinity, by the way. That was really nice of you. Please don't die. Now, anyway, impossible. I'm going to go stop existing now. Bye! But wait, Bye. what about the piece of eight? <sighs> Hearing uh, Sorok say that he's Shinzo's going to come back in here and take another peek around, and see if maybe piece of eight is in here. No, you don't find anything okay. else in here except. Near, like, except in the pedestal, you find a few scrolls. All of them listing off the, uh, all of the stuff that was in the labyrinth. The vast majority of it is, has been struck out. In fact, judging by how much of it has been struck out, you just took all that was left. But nowhere on that list does it say piece of eight. Yeah, he's gonna bring all the scrolls back to everybody. I, uh, looked again, but this is all I could find. Or I would actually start reading through it, like, trying to find exactly a piece of eight. You do not find it. There is no piece of eight. But there was supposed to be one here. Damn it. Okay. This was worth it at the end of the day, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Is anyone going to claim that skull is cat? Uh, out of character, <laughs> I think the only one that only other one that would use it is Ikarath, and I don't know if he wants it, because, I mean, he has it set up now. It's yours. Okay, because the Chantel is just happy, and she's gonna wear this for the rest of the day. <laughs> and as y'all make your way out of this sector of the labyrinth, you would find the lepies waiting for you at the entrance. They cheer at their brand new heroes having escaped with their lives from the tricks and traps of the labyrinth. And they lead the party to the exit, which is now wide open. As the labyrinth no longer has anything worth guarding, it has allowed itself to be opened up wide. You may not have found a piece of eight in here. But you may have found something even more powerful. Friendship. 
I mean, a god. <laughs> Friendship <laughs> with a god. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You have no idea how fucking significant this is. Oh my god. And with that, I believe we are going to call it here for the evening. Yep. 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 Indeed. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen and others, I'd like to thank you all for watching this episode of Seas of Salt Marsh. You have been a wonderful audience, folks on Twitch. Uh, thank you so much for being here. It is yeah, hella good. If you're watching this later on YouTube, again, thank you. Your viewership means a lot to us. We wouldn't actually be doing this if we didn't think we were entertaining people. Uh, shout out to Shun and Bean for doing the amazing artwork of the characters. A uh, special shout out to Incarnate for the map. Uh, for to <sighs> shit, I don't actually know who did the impossible stronghold stuff. The map tile set was is the uh... where is it? Impossible tile set stronghold one and two on Roll Twenty Marketplace. Uh, Shinzo, thank you for editing. You're welcome. Yep. <laughs> uh, if you like what you saw, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Link is in the doobly-doo. Uh, like, comment, subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. It really does help our channel grow. And, uh, Shenzo, now that you're a demigod, uh, uh, uh it's sex. Is god sex different than normal sex? Don't know, but he's probably gonna find out. Hell yeah. Alright, bye! <laughs>